On September 20, 1991, the body of a handcuffed woman was found in some weeds along Seaview Avenue in Staten Island, New York, across from South Beach Psychiatric Center. She had been bludgeoned to death, and the likely weapon was a hammer found underneath her body. Etched into the hammer was the name Lloyd L. The hammer was the kind used by auto shop workers to bang out dents. Investigators believe that her body was dumped at the location around 6 p.m. the night before. Unable to identify her, she became known as Girl with the Scorpion Tattoo because of the tattoo she had. Her remains were buried in an unmarked grave on Hart Island, the site of New York City's Potter's Field. Her true identity would remain unknown for the next 31 years. In the years after her death, police briefly looked at Long Island serial killer Joel Rifkin, who confessed to killing 17 women between 1989 and 1993. However, nothing came of this. In 2008, the district attorney's office revisited the case and submitted her DNA to CODIS, and her dental records were submitted to the FBI, but unfortunately, no new leads surfaced. In 2021, authorities partnered with Othram, who created a DNA profile using Jane Doe's blood and tissue from her autopsy. This profile was used for genetic genealogy research, and in March 2023, her identity was announced as Christine Belusco. Authorities discovered that when Christine went missing, she had a two-year-old daughter named Krista Nicole Belusco. Christine was described as both a free spirit and extremely trusting. She was the biological daughter of a New Jersey woman with eight other children and had been placed for adoption as an infant. Detectives tracked down the identity of her adoptive parents Frank Belusco, who had been a glass molder from Montville, New Jersey, and his wife Dorothy, who worked as a secretary at an auto dealership in Boonton, New Jersey. At the age of 29, Christine was living in Clifton, New Jersey, and working at a dress shop called The Rainbow Shop. In July 1991, she left Clifton, and she and Krista were briefly staying in the Mount Airy Lodge in Mount Poconos, Pennsylvania. After last being seen at the lodge, neither was reported missing. Investigators said they could not discuss the last days of her life or why she came to Staten Island due to the continued investigation. After she learned she was adopted, she drifted away from her family. She told them she was leaving Clifton, New Jersey, and was headed for Florida. Her family never assumed she was murdered and believed she had made it to Florida and was living a new life and chose not to keep in contact. Her adoptive mother died in 2000, and her adoptive father died two years later. Both obituaries named Christine and her daughter as surviving family members. Now, police are searching for her daughter Krista, who would be 33 years old today. Some speculate that Christine was the victim of a serial killer because around the time of her discovery, Another woman, Wendy Louise Baker, was found in a parking lot off I-80 near New Jersey's border in Knowlton Township, not very far from where Christine and Krista were last seen. Wendy had been traveling through multiple states before ultimately being found. As of 2023, Krista has never been found, and this case remains unsolved. In May of 1990, 35-year-old Myrtle Brown was visiting her best friend in New York. While there, her purse was stolen, which contained her seizure medication and ID. She called her 13-year-old daughter, Ebony Brown, and the rest of her family to tell them what happened and let them know she wasn't feeling well. She said she was going to the Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn to get more medication for her epilepsy, but unfortunately was having to go alone. This was the last time her loved ones ever spoke to her. For weeks, her mother and other family members visited local police precincts and hospitals looking for Myrtle, but were never able to find her. At this point, her daughter began to believe her mother ran away from her life. 32 years later, her brother Robert Brown turned on the TV and began watching NBC Nightly News. At the time, there was a special about cold cases and he saw a clay model of a facial reconstruction of a young lady that resembled his sister. 
Two days later, Robert and his wife contacted the New York City Office of Chief Medical Examiner. Dr. Angela Soler, Assistant Director of Forensic Anthropology, and her team began working on Myrtle's case. For nearly two months, Dr. Soler reviewed records of unverified unknowns and missing people with a potential name that has not been verified or confirmed. She started her search early on May 1, 1990, and by May 17, 1990, she found what she believed was a presumptive match to Myrtle Brown. The woman's body was discovered on March 31, 2008, 18 years after Myrtle went missing, and her skeletal remains were unearthed in the basement of a former nightclub on Church Street in New York City. But, unfortunately, it turned out not to be Myrtle. Dr. Soler then continued her investigation and eventually came across another unidentified woman that she felt could be a match. When she showed a picture of the unidentified woman to Robert and Ebony, they knew immediately it was Myrtle. It turns out that Myrtle was never registered or admitted to Kings County Hospital, but she had been waiting in the emergency room when she had a seizure and died. The only information Myrtle gave to the hospital was her name and date of birth. Robert and Ebony said their family was finally at peace after finding out what happened to their beloved sister and mother all those years ago. In December 2021, a woman's New Balance brand shoe size 8 was found near the mouth of the Elwha River in Port Angeles, Washington. The person who found the shoe would have the shock of their life when they discovered a human foot inside. The Clallam County Sheriff's Office was quickly notified of the finding, and the search began for who the foot belonged to. Due to the finding of only the partial remains, investigators could not determine the woman's age or ethnicity. With very few leads for investigators to pursue, the case would eventually go cold. Then, in 2022, the Sheriff's Office partnered with Othram Labs to determine if advanced forensic DNA testing could help identify the person or a close relative. A DNA Solves crowdfund was established and raised the $7,500 needed to cover casework cost. Othram provided a list of surviving family members to the identified DNA source to confirm the identity of the remains. Sheriff's detectives contacted one of the surviving family members who voluntarily provided a DNA sample sent to Othram for comparison. In February 2023, Othram confirmed that the foot belonged to a resident of Squim, Washington. Her name was Geraldine Lorraine Smith, and she was reported missing on January 7, 2018. Gerilyn was 68 years old at the time of her disappearance, and according to her husband of 50 years, Ronald, he left their bedroom to sleep on the couch sometime during the night of January 6, 2018. He went to church the next morning without seeing Jerry Lynn, and when he returned home, she was gone. He discovered her car parked near the bridge near Port Angeles and called the Clallam County Sheriff's Office. Search and rescue dogs led investigators to the middle of the bridge, directly over the river. Authorities speculate she died by jumping off the Elwha River Road Bridge and into the Elwha River west of Port Angeles, as she had a long history of depression and suicidal thoughts. During two days of searching, search and rescue crews in kayaks, on foot, and in a Coast Guard helicopter could not locate her body. Divers searched the river and the banks to the beaches along the Straits of Juan de Fuca, but Gerilyn was never found. Nearly two weeks later, family and friends held a memorial service for Gerilyn at the Dunganus Community Church, led by her brother and pastor, Ken Gilchrist. During her life, Gerilyn had worked as a property manager and bookkeeper for Smith Family Enterprises for 40 years. Afterward, she worked as a secretary and receptionist at various businesses, as a bank customer representative, and as an office manager and bookkeeper at Linden Chamber of Commerce, before serving as the Squim Dunganus Chamber of Commerce's office administrator for 17 years. Co-workers said even after retirement, Gerilyn continued to volunteer there and was described as having a cheerful personality and was always caring and supportive of others. 
born and raised in Squim, Jerry Lynn knew just about everything about the city. For her activity in the community and being a Squim native, Jerry Lynn was selected as Grand Marshal of the 2009 Squim Irrigation Festival. Surviving family members are grateful to the Clallam County Sheriff's Office, Othram Labs, and the citizens who generously crowdfunded the familial DNA work performed by Othram Labs. Interestingly, finding a foot inside a sneaker washed up on shore isn't that unusual in the Pacific Northwest. Since August 20, 2007, at least 20 detached human feet have been found on the coast of the Salish Sea in British Columbia, Canada, and Washington. On November 15, 1978, in Granby, Massachusetts, a woman was found in a wooded area buried under leaves on a logging road off Amherst Street. The medical examiner determined she had been shot and a leather belt was used to drag her body to the area where it was ultimately found. She was fully clothed and a ring was found with initials on it, but they were illegible. It was determined that she had died a few months earlier and was likely between the ages of 15 and 27 years old. With no way to identify her, locals buried her in a cemetery marked as unknown in God's care. At the time, they had no way of knowing that the woman they came to refer to as Granby Girl or Hampshire County Jane Doe would go unidentified for the next 44 years. In 2022, authorities in Massachusetts sent her DNA to Othram Labs, who in turn created a DNA profile to be used for genetic genealogy research. They identified a woman in Maryland who said that her aunt had been missing since the 1970s. Through this woman, they were able to identify Jane Doe as 28-year-old Patricia Ann Coleman. Patricia was born July 28, 1950, and in November 1977, she married Gerald Coleman in Middletown, Connecticut. At the time of her disappearance, she was living along the eastern shore of Lake Pocatapog in East Hampton, Connecticut, and had two young sons from a previous marriage. Police consider her husband, Gerald Coleman, a person of interest in the case. On August 8, 1978, Gerald dropped his stepsons off at an acquaintance's home, stating that he and his wife needed to take care of some business. When nobody returned to pick up the children, the woman contacted social services. The children were eventually reunited with their birth father, and they never saw Gerald again. Strangely, he never reported her missing. After further investigation, it was learned that Gerald served time in 1968 for attempted kidnapping while using a firearm, and in 1995, he was convicted of assault and rape and died in a Massachusetts prison in 1996. One of Patricia's sons had a DNA profile on Ancestry.com and forwarded it to authorities, which helped confirm Patricia's true identity. As of 2023, her murder remains unsolved. On November 1, 1991, in Pickaway County, Ohio, skeletal remains were located by hunters in a shallow grave along a private farm road on the north side of State Route 56, west of State Route 159. Upon review by anthropologists, it was determined the remains had likely been in the ground for no more than three years. Investigators originally believed the remains were those of a long-dead Native American woman about 25 years old because the person was no taller than 5 foot 4 and because of the region's connection to indigenous communities, but this would later prove to be wrong. In 2012, scientists at North Texas University examined the bones and were able to successfully extract DNA. That DNA showed that the unidentified person was actually male instead of female. Additionally, it was noted that the individual might have ancestry originating from India. In 2021, authorities decided to pursue genetic genealogy. 
However, due to the condition of the bones, additional specialized testing was required, but ultimately resulted in a DNA profile suitable for genetic genealogy. In January 2022, Dr. John Ellis and Lt. Jonathan Strausser contracted with Advanced DNA for Genetic Genealogy Research Services to restore the man's identity and solve the 30-year-old mystery. Advanced DNA uploaded the DNA profile into Family Tree DNA and GEDmatch databases and obtained a family tree with more than 4,000 members. Their initial research determined that the man's father would likely have ties to Virginia and his mother would be of English and Indian heritage with recent immigration to the United States. On November 1, 2022, exactly 31 years from the date of discovery, Advanced DNA met with the Pickaway County Sheriff's Office, and with the help of distant cousins of the man, they were able to produce a strong lead. Finally, at the end of 2022, authorities confirmed his identity as 21-year-old Robert Mullins of Columbus, Ohio. Robert's family reports that he went missing sometime between November 1988 and April 1989. Robert's late mother took his disappearance the hardest and never stopped looking for her son. While Robert has been identified, his homicide still remains unsolved. 